Welcome to the Power Play Reconnect Experience. I'm your host, Ruth Carol Haskins. Today I witnessed something that was to me, who lives in a busy green urban environment, very unusual. It was burning hot today, a fry and egg on the sidewalk kind of day. I stopped at the grocery store. A woman pulled in next to me. When she stepped out of her car, she left all the windows down. It was not a new car, but still, who does that? I stepped out of my not-so-new car and made sure all the windows were up and turned on the alarm. I also noticed as I was driving to accomplish all of my errands that most people were sealed up in their cars. I recognized that in the heat of the day, air conditioning was being used. Okay. I, on the other hand, had my windows open, front and back. The only moments of discomfort were briefly at stoplights and on returning to the sealed up car between stops. So leave it to me to see a correlation between the woman who left her windows down on her car as she went into the grocery store and my windows versus air conditioning mindset. You know, both were about trust. The woman evidently trusted that no one would take her car. And I took a peek as I got out of my car to see if anyone was left in her car. Nope, she had just left the windows down. For me, I trusted that though it was hot outside, the breeze that I received through my open windows was sufficient for cooling and for life. The air quality was not on high alert, so I was certain that I was not going to die from airborne particulate matter, at least not today. So let me flash back for a moment. My mother drove a Buick, big, beautiful car. We would go downtown and mother, who believed in exercise, would park at the far end of the downtown area, a two mile strip. We would be gone for hours, and I do mean hours. Store after store, maybe a movie, maybe a stop at the pizza place or somewhere for a small snack. But on one hot summer day, I remember my older sister putting the windows up. My mother told her it wasn't necessary and the car would be too hot when we returned. This trusting and benign attitude extended to our house. We didn't lock the doors when we left. Of course, this was in the mid-1950s when trust was high. You could borrow a cup of sugar from your neighbor in exchange for a nice chat and promises to share the famous coconut cake you were baking. Everyone knew everyone's child by name, where they lived, and was authorized to warn or verbally correct them if they saw them out of control or into mischief. Children trusted the reprimand because they trusted that the news of their behavior would reach home before they did, and they, myself included, trusted the consequences. Flash forward to 2023. Nobody trusts anyone or anything. To leave your car unlocked and unprotected means the possibility of theft. To trust the people you love often means disappointment, betrayal, and marriages ending in divorce. Trusting the air we breathe means immediate or future respiratory problems. We open our computers and we have a series of keys, codes, passwords, and all sorts of locks and blocks to access our information. There are days when we actually spend at least 20 to 30 minutes breaking through all our protective paraphernalia on the computer, on the phone, at work, and even to access entry into our own homes. We have no trust in each other's goodness. We wouldn't dare ask someone, a stranger, to fulfill a momentary need. And if we do, there is fear. When was the last time you asked someone to borrow a cup of sugar? Moreover, share with them a slice of your prize-winning cake. We don't trust that our children will return home from school. We don't trust big organizations, long-standing organizations, 
clergy, car salesmen, politicians, religions. Uh, yeah, there are a whole lot of people that we no longer trust. And I could go down the entire rabbit hole of how, at least in the United States, and from the days of my childhood, trust has gone down the toilet. And along with trust, love has fallen away. M most people are in love with something or someone or out of love with something or someone. But to love as a permanent state of our being is a rarity. Trust is equally rare. We trust more in violence than love and in technology than our own humanity. Take a look at the entertainment. There is no love, but we completely trust in murder and mayhem. The absence of trust and her sister love makes our lives not only very difficult, but also frightening. So I did find quotes for today. The first is from Anton Chekhov. You must trust and believe in people or life becomes impossible. And the second is from Munshe Premshad. Trust is the very first step to love. So this is more than just a thought. This is the power play reconnect experience. Much love to you all. Thank you for listening.